I think to turn to the other um, area of the Isle of Man that undoubtedly inspired and influenced Knox, and that is uh, the stones of the island. And um, I'm definitely way out of my depth here, but I'll give it a go, courtesy of Google. I've tried to capture three types of stone. Uh, the sort of Manx Celtic Knox stone, which is prevalent on the island, and clearly anyone who's been to the stand or knows Knox will see the influence immediately. Uh, in the middle is the more runic stone, and you get this writing on the right, uh, as well as some Celtic knots, which I think, think might be later additions to the stone. Um, and you see this, uh, this old uh, language, in fact. And then even more ancient are these Ogham stones, which, and these types of stones pervade all of northern Europe, of course, but it, they're there on the island and undoubtedly influenced him. And you see that in some of the metalwork on the stand as well, with the big uh, clocks in particular. Now, before I come on to the metalwork, he was also, he was an artist, he was also a designer. Again, we've not been able to cover this in this exhibition, but many, many of the designs of the period, again, that are associated with liberty, are Knox's, not, not all, by any means. But again, and he had this brilliant knack, and we've picked this out, many of you will recognize it, of course, from the invitation. A brilliant knack of, in this case, color, uh, knots, Celtic knots, just to create that wonderful, I think that's a design for a wallpaper. And this is from Ireland, in fact, but just another stone that he may have been aware of that may have influenced him from the same sort of period. So to turn to his metalwork, as I say, we're only dealing with six years of his life here, but it was an incredibly fruitful period for him and, indeed, perhaps the world around 1900 in design. And he started designing for the studi Silver Studio around 1897-8, and I'll come to that in a moment. But the Silver Studio, Silver was the name of the owner, nothing to do with the metal. Uh, uh, was the design studio that Liberty turned to for its designs. Uh, without doubt, he designed many of the early Liberty Kumrick pieces. Um, and then in 1902, the Pewter Tudric range was launched, which again embraces nearly all his designs. And really, after about 1900, nearly all of the material, not all, but nearly all of the material that Liberty produced in this range was, was Knox's. And he was recognized by Liberty, notwithstanding, of course, the gravestone as well at this time as their great designer. Uh, in 1901, he listed himself in the census, I think, as a metalwork designer. Uh, but around 1905-06, again, due to commercialism, uh, Art Nouveau movement moved on, arts and crafts movement moved on, Liberty really demised not just the Celtic, um, Kumrick and Tudric range, but that whole department really um, became far, far less uh, significant. This is um, actually quite an important document, and I fear not very legible from afar, so I'll talk you through it. But Chicken's Rock, to start at the top, is a, um, a very, I think it's a small island off the coast of Isle of Man. And I think then as now, it is commonplace to take boat trips by way of a uh, tourist attraction. This turned up in, I think it's a lighthouse as well, in the, in the, um, in the uh, lighthouse logbook of 1897, uh, 10th of August, a summer trip. And what you see is uh, Mrs., Mr. and Mrs. Napper, Harry Napper, who was the managing director and lead designer of the Silver Studio, accompanied by A.J. Collister uh, of Douglas, who was Knox's great friend, the other great artist of the time from the Isle of Man, um, and gave Knox jobs when he was headmaster in those Surrey art schools in 1907 to 12. And down the bottom, uh, separate one in the same trip, on the same boat, you see Annie Knox, Archibald Knox, and actually William Knox just outside the orange. So, Without a doubt, we think this only turned up a few years back. This is the kind of moment or proof or evidence that these were all working together as part of the Silver Studio, and it's hard evidence that Knox was there in the Silver Studio uh, as, a, excuse me, as early as 1897, right when the Kumrick Range and all this design was taking off, so he was a very important part of it. 